It's a beautiful day in Alberta. BC. Alberta. BC. Both. <laughs> and we're in Kootenai National Park. Well, I am until you come over onto the BC oh. side. We're there in we Kootenai National Park. We're Tom and Angel, and we're visiting an often overlooked and overshadowed Rocky Mountain Park, Kootenai National Park. Join us as we enjoy the natural beauty of canyons, paint pots, and relax in famous hot spring pools. Our first stop in Kootenai National Park is Marble Canyon. Where do canyons come from? Multiple places. In the case of Marble Canyon, it is from the ship of the Tectonic Fleet. What once was a mountain split and created this canyon. This area, about 500 million years ago, which I know is an impossible amount of time to think about, was under the ocean. And I was always confused. I thought that there was just all this water, but it was because there were no mountains yet. As the mountains rose, some of them peaked, like the ones that we know, you, know, you can see behind us up in the sky, and others, as they went up, the ground broke apart and caused this canyon to form. Actually, it's, it's dolomite and limestone, but... If I actually cared, I dolom might have known that already. Our next stop in Kootenai National Park is the Paint Pots. Paint Pots Trail that leads to the Paint Pots. We're coming close to the paint pots and we're reaching this marsh, this kind of open marsh area. And all around us are these little puddles of orange and red. Oh, this is fun. And it looks a lot like clay, but it's actually not. It is ochre or okra. I don't really know how it's said. It's said like this. Ochre. The color is incredible. It's so vibrant. Honestly, I'm looking at these bridges and it kind of looks like when you stain turmeric yeah. on your wooden spoons. <laughs> but then over there, it was like red, this deep, rich red. The colors are changing. These are the paint pots. This is also known as red earth to the indigenous peoples, also known as ochre. And for thousands of years, indigenous peoples from all different tribes come here because they consider this a sacred place. And what they do is they actually collect the ochre and they use it as paint to paint their bodies, teepees, horses, and even rock paintings. In the early 1900s, the ochre was mined for paint pigment. But since Kootenai National Park was established in 1920, they've since stopped mining to preserve the landscape. The pots that you see in this area are naturally formed cold water springs. So the water's coming up through the ground and the iron deposit creates a circle because it's heavy and the water doesn't wash it away. So that's where these come from. And they seem so alien that I can see why when the Aboriginals found it, they knew it was special. These are the iron rings that we were talking about. So as the water levels rise and as it dries up, it creates these layers of iron, but also creates mounds because of it. Hey Tom, did you order a turmeric latte with extra foam? It's right here. <laughs> I'm like, what should I paint? My hand. Wow, that's, that's beautiful actually. So it looks like I'm not the only one who had the idea to wash our shoes off in this clean water. <laughs> so I also don't feel so bad about it. From examples of how <laughs> the red earth was used to paint. Numa Falls! is our next stop. This is an easy one, just off the highway, a little walkie poo, and we should be getting a really good view of the falls. Who doesn't love an easy waterfall? made it 
to the Simpson River Trailhead. While it is part of Kootenai National Park, not all of it is part of Kootenai National Park. This is actually the entryway to Mount Assiniboine Provincial Park, which is absolutely incredible. However, it is not the trip we're on. So we're gonna explore the Kootenai section of this trail and yeah, see the sights that it has to offer. What you doing? Wiping my feet to avoid dragging this species into different areas. At this point, we're just carrying riders <laughs> to this area. You never know. When. Although forest fires are incredibly devastating, they're actually a key part of the forest life cycle. There are plants that are called pyrophytes, and these plants thrive and survive because of fires. And they do this in a couple of different ways. One would be that they are resistant, so they can have tougher bark because they're harder to burn. Secondly, they release their seeds from fire. Some of these pine cones, for example, have a thick resin in the shell, and it's only after these high heats that they actually melt and open up to release these seeds. And finally, fires help to re-sprout. So although it burns up the shrubs on the floor, it actually clears the deadfall for new shrubs to grow out of it. And a lot of these shrubs are also resistant because they persist from the roots underground. So fires are very natural. It's only from our human forest fire prevention that has caused it to go to the scale that it has over the last couple of years, where naturally these fires happen in pockets, but now because we prevented them from happening naturally for so long, these pockets are now clustering together and they create huge fires that span throughout these huge forests. That's, nice. That's the Simpson River. We've made it to the lookout in Simpson River and we've come across the iconic Parks Canada red chairs. And this is probably the first time that I've seen it, but in this one, they have a registry. They have like a field notes. Yeah. This chair location is so random, but so super appreciated. And I wonder if any bears have gotten so smart that they know that humans come here. And then this is like a trap area. They're behind us now. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, hope we don't die. There has been a bear here recently. Wasn't about to touch it to see how warm it was, but it looked pretty fresh. Ooh, bear! Ooh, ooh. Our final stop today is Radium Hot Springs. They have hot spring pools and we are excited to go in them. I hear them. I hear them flowing. Oh, there's one. We've made our way to Radium Hot Springs, which is, in my opinion, the crowning jewel of Kootenai National Park. It was originally built in the late 1800s and stood alone as its own independent station until the 1920s when Kootenai National Park expanded and they decided to consolidate it into the park. It has since become an absolute gem of British Columbia. The facility consists of different temperature pools being fed from natural hot springs, similar to ones found in other mountaintops like Banff. And in case you're wondering, we are in the cool pool, which is why there's no one else here. We're back in the hot pool. I think my favorite part is that there is a cold tub right beside us. So you can do like a mini polar dip. But the thing is, it's not labeled. So people think it's a hot tub. And so when they dip their toes, they get a shock of cold water and it's really entertaining to watch. You just hear this <laughs> yeah. every time. But it's actually good for you because you can't stay in here for too long. You have to cool it down after 10 minutes, they recommend. So we've gone in there already and we will go in again. We're going in the cold pool and we're gonna see who can stay in there for the longest. Ready? You ready? Go. Okay, you have to come in at the same time, otherwise it's cheating. Come in, let's go. Okay, ready? I need to sit. My heart is beating. I can hear my heartbeat. You're good? Yeah. So let's just stay. Good. Just go get hypothermia. Yeah, see, there's the shivers. <laughs> this, this is good content. <laughs> <laughs> 
Okay, we're good. Did you acclimate? I'm acclimated. I don't believe her. So I call this a stalemate. Yep. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, cool. Do you want to get out? Yeah, I guess All it's right. time. Okay. It's a tie. It is very cold though. But it is really cold. Okay, cool. Done. <sighs> You're a jerk! Nope, we said tie. We said it was a stalemate. It's a tie. That was delightful. After a day of fairly chilly, windy hikes, to just relax and soak in a natural mineral spa, like so nice. That was probably my favorite thing today. My skin, if you could feel my skin, <laughs> just. The hot springs themselves are not very expensive at all. For an adult, it was like $7 or so. They're open way later than you might think. Like I think their winter hours are until 9 p.m. and their summer hours until 10. So like, that was super handy. It was awesome. Not a lot of people. Nice and warm, good time. Highly recommend. I would come back here every time I pass through. That's how nice it is. We're back at Radium Hot Springs this morning because it also happens to be the trailhead of the trail that we wanted to do yesterday but ran out of time. So this morning we grabbed some coffee and some breakfast from Bighorn Cafe and now we're back here to do this trail. So let's get to it. Did you know larches are the only Canadian deciduous conifers? Which means they have needles like pine trees or cedars but they turn yellow and fall off in the winter, like maple or oak, the more you know. Whoa. All right, so Angel just pointed out the coolest little thing. We're gonna have to zoom into, whoa, the whoa, whoa. There's a family of deer right there. Oh, well, sorry, guys. They were just grazing. We didn't even see them. I think I scared them with my excitement. Probably. Well, we've made it into the forest, eh? These are the same water source as the Radium Hot Springs, right? In theory, I don't In know. In theory. I'm gonna go check to see if it's warm. It's normal cold. It's not glacial cold. This is normal cold. What's up there? Civilization. Now what, we just hitchhike? Don't do that. My favorite part are all the cars waving back at me. <laughs> Just taking a little break after our hike but that basically marks the end of our trip in Kootenai National Park. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you in the next one. Bye! Bye. On this side I'm in Alberta and now I'm in British Columbia. I'm in both. <laughs> Girl where'd you get your palette? Oh uh, you know it's like a turmeric.